Hello everyone, I would like to do a review of this replacement joystick for the N64. I've found these on eBay and also on Amazon. The It comes from a company or brand named Repairbox, item number DN64RA04. Repairbox and RB are trademarks owned by Hyperkin Inc. Other brand names and trademarks are used for descriptive purposes only and remain the property of their respective owners. Looks like it even has a UPC. So this is a pretty professional product and it's pretty cool that some company decided to get in the market of making replacement N64 joysticks. Because you know those joysticks are the weakest part of the system. Now um, Here's what it looks like. You can see it's actually quite different looking from the normal N64 joysticks because it has a circuit board exposed on the bottom. The normal N64 joysticks just have a blank face on the bottom. The, uh, the connector is compatible with the N64 joysticks, of course, but it was I felt like it was harder to plug in. Now, the main thing that I don't like about these is how hard it is to move this joystick. It's, you can't tell from the video, but it takes quite a bit of force to move this joystick. Here in my hands is a standard N64 joystick, or at least it, it looks like it's pretty close to the standard uh, original one from Nintendo. And you can see, if I put these two units together, look how much the standard one bends compared to the repair box unit. See how the standard one is bending almost all the way to its extreme position before the repair box one even bends like halfway there. there e the, the force applied by one joystick on the other is it's equal and opposite forces. So you can tell that it takes a lot more force. So you can tell it takes a lot more force to deflect this repair box joystick than the normal one. I wonder if there's something we can do about it. Let's take it apart and see how it works. All right, so I've taken apart the repair box joystick, and what do we have here? Well, of course, this is the joystick piece and the top cover, and you can see inside, this is the joystick piece, and there's a spring here. This is actually what gives, the spring is actually what um, when you move the joystick, that's what stores the energy and makes the spring return to its original position. So how does that work? Well, we have this little piece here. Uh, as far as I can tell, this goes on top of the spring to uh, help couple the spring to the pieces in the bottom part. Now here's the bottom part. You can see there's a lot of stuff here, but th these, there are these two pieces, the, the gray joystick thing sticks between these two pieces and when it moves those those pieces will move, one for the X dimension, one for the Y dimension. Um, those are coupled to these, those are connected to these th two things. Yeah, I'll point it with my screwdriver. This and that. These are actually, they, they look to me like potentiometers because they have three pins three pins on that one. And these potentiometers are mounted to this circuit board. Um, now the original uh, N64 joysticks actually used optical encoders. So this circuit board, I think that's probably a microcontroller right there and it probably reads the value of the potentiometer just using an analog to digital converter and then it makes the uh, appropriate signals to make it look like it's a optical encoder. So here's a better shot showing the moving action. When you move the joystick in one direction, the, the plastic piece will turn and see how it's coupled to the potentiometer over here, so the potentiometer turns. And see how th there's this flat bit there and there. Those bits will turn, and because they're turning, they'll push on this plate. They will push this plate up whenever you deflect the joystick away from the center that uh, plate in turn will push this spring up and that's where you're storing your energy when you move the joystick with your thumb. That spring stores the energy 
and because that spring is compressed, it wants to push the joystick back to the center position. So I have a feeling that we might be able to improve the the deflection force of this joystick if we somehow <clears throat> if we somehow could just make the spring weaker. Maybe we can make it weaker by simply cutting off parts of it. Let's give it a shot. I think I don't want to cut this end. See, there's there's an end that there's a small end and a large end. I think I want to cut the small end because that just interfaces with this part. So I think it doesn't particularly matter if its properties change. Whereas the large end interfaces with this little piece. So I, I wouldn't want, if we change it, it will probably be really hard to put the joystick back together. Uh, see, yeah, it goes like that. Um, so yeah, we're going to cut the small end. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't know. Um, you can see this is the top, so maybe let's just try for a first. At uh, first, let's cut off 180 degrees. So we'll go from the top, go to the opposite side, and, and cut there. Mm. Oh man, this is kind of hard. All right, so it turns out you just need to squeeze the pliers really hard and they can actually cut this, even though this is pretty tough. This is a pretty tough spring. So here you can see how much we cut off. And uh, here's the spring. So I'm gonna try putting the joystick back together and see if it's better. All right, so to put this thing back together, I think you want to first get into this situation where you have the vertical axis piece here and you have the horizontal axis piece here oh wait yeah um, but so this so what we're gonna do is uh, is try to put this in so that the gray thing goes into the hole here and the little gear connects to the potentiometer and if you see Let's get that focused. You can see that I think because of the way I cut the spring, it's already, this thing is already starting to tilt, so that's kind of a bad sign. It's okay, so I've put back together the repair box joystick, and you know, feeling it, I think it feels a little better, but I kind of get mixed results when I do this test. Now maybe I just need to cut off more of the spring. So I got out the diagonal pliers again and cut a, another segment off. This left hand one is the second segment I cut, the right hand one is the first. And now this is what my spring looks like. Oops, I'm looking at this a second time and I think I did what I told you I didn't want to do. I think I actually cut off from the wider end of the spring. Oops, well, I will see if it still works anyway. All right, well, I put it back together and you know it still doesn't really feel like it should. I, I think part of it is still the return force is too strong and also I feel like there's a lot of friction. I feel like as I move it through different spots I'm feeling different amounts of friction on different parts of the bowl under there and it just doesn't feel good. So maybe I should consider adding some lubricant to it. Another idea I had is maybe I can just take a spring from an original N64 joystick and put it in here. Let's see if that works. So on the left, I have a spring from an original N64 joystick, and on the right, I have this mangled spring from the repair box that I have cut two pieces off of. Now, if I attach this, if I try to put this uh plastic piece between them, we can kind of get an idea of the relative strengths of the springs, maybe. Well, well, there's something. So the original N64 one is on the top. When I squeeze these, the original N64 one seems to be compressing a lot more. So um, it, it does seem to be a weaker spring, which is good. You know, you want to kind of feel these and, and see. I th 
yeah, I feel like the original N64 one is definitely a lot weaker. Now, maybe that's just because it's really old. That could be a possibility. But I suspect it's just because it was better designed. So I'm going to try putting this spring into the repair box and see how it works. Alright, so now I have this repair box joystick. I've taken the original spring out of that and I've put a joystick, or I've put a spring from an, uh, what appears to be an original N64 joystick inside. So I've put a much looser spring. And this is actually starting to feel pretty good. Now I can compare it to a, a normal repair box joystick and I guess I still get mixed results but seems like it's looser to the other axis. Seems like the one on the left is deflecting a lot more, so that's good. It just feels a lot better too, but yeah, it feels a lot easier to use. I mean, it's, this feels great. I mean, if any repair box people are watching, you know, just think about re reducing the force in your spring. Um, now, but there's still a problem. It still feels a little bit gritty. When I move this, I feel like I'm encountering varying resistance at different points, and as a result, my movement is kind of choppy and not smooth as compared to what I can do on this N64 joystick. All right, so I've cut even more off of this spring from the repair box joystick. Oh, man, that was difficult, but I finally, after like three tries, uh, got this joystick assembly back together and you know every time I put it back together and and manage to get it working it, it feels a little bit looser but then I always go back to compare it to this nice original N64 joystick and that one just feels so much better so I don't know it might just be a waste of time to uh, to even be doing this um, Maybe I'll try again on another repair box one because I have three. But for now, I think I'm just going to say try to get the real deal.